Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody, and welcome to NWSL Live. I am Jordan Angeli, and I am so excited to be your host of this show every Thursday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. We are going to be bringing you content and things happening around the league, insight, information, all the above. Well, you just heard me say we, so it's not just me. I'm going to be joined by two very special guests, Lori Lindsay and Jeff Kasuf. Lori Lindsay, former professional and a legend in her own right. She has 31 caps with the U.S. Women's National Team. Lori spent two years in NWSL with the Washington Spirit. She now covers MLS NWSL college games and international games as an analyst. I'm going to bring her in right now. I think I'm going to bring her in right now. <laughs> <laughs> Lori, what's up? How are uh, you? Hi. Great. How are you? Here you Thanks are. Thanks for hosting. So excited Yay, to hi. have you. Um, welcome. Our first show. You pretty pumped about this? Yeah, super pumped. It's been in the works for a bit now. And yes. now that we've had like an amazing support cast behind the scenes, yes. we're, we're good to go. So here we are. I'm going to bring in our other expert that we're having, Jeff Kasuf, the founder of Equalizer Soccer. He founded that back in June of 2009 after covering WPS as a freelance writer. Jeff said, I got to make this official. Yeah. I'm making the Equalizer. You brought this vision of bringing women's soccer, the coverage that it deserved, and you've been doing it ever since. Jeff, welcome. Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm feeling a little bit old from that intro, I think. But uh, yeah, <laughs> oh, good. 2009. Right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we all are. We are right there with you. We are so excited to start this. I think, first off, we just need to kind of tell everybody what was the inspiration behind that, this and why we felt like now is the time to create the show NWSL Live. Yeah, I think, I mean, you know, it's obviously... Uh, it's a big time for the league. It was in 2019. And, and I think a lot of that momentum coming into 2020 and, um, you know, unfortunately uh, everything is shut down right now, but, but we don't have, you know, games at the moment and hopefully we do have something soon, but um, just kind of keeping that conversation going. And, you know, there's, there's so many great things that have happened already in the league going into season eight here when, whenever it comes. And um, you know, that's kind of the plan for us here, right? We've got a lot to, to look forward to a lot to look back on as well so we'll kind of have some fun debate and, and add some some information some opinion from fans and, and listeners yeah and Lori, for you this is something that you've right away you've been wanting to be a part of because you have been calling nwsl games but this gives you a little insight into giving some more analysis during the week something that i know you're excited about yeah, I mean, I think the one thing that we can all agree on, and Jeff touched on this, is that we're all missing sports, right? So, and obviously the NWSL is near and dear to all three of our hearts and many fans and players. And so why not? Let's let's talk to some of the players. Let's talk to other analysts. Let's talk to um, staff that are involved with the teams and, and just see what's going on during this time and hopefully be gearing up for more to come eventually, whatever that looks like in some capacity. So what we're bringing to you guys is a show every Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern time, and it is going to be filled with all different things. Uh, a lot of the times a debate, a debatable topic. We're going <laughs> to have something that we can chat about, whether it is the best goalkeeper keeper in NWSL history or the best player of all time. Every single week, we're going to dig into one of these categories and give you something uh, to get you thinking a little bit. And then we have a special guest every single week. We're going to get you guys a player from NWSL and we're going to chat with her and just talk with her about maybe what life is like right now, what life has been like as a professional athlete and what really drives them to continue to compete, why they play. And then we want to make sure that we're, we're chatting with you guys. We want this to be as interactive as possible. The best thing about doing this on Facebook Live, is we all agree, we, we want to hear from you guys. And so there's an awesome chat here that we get to see what you guys want to know. So make sure you comment in the chat comment in the chat that you give us some questions, you hit us up so we can start to hear what you guys want to know. So that's kind of the premise. I think we should get right into it and get, get into our, our, our debate for the day. <laughs> 
we were trying to think of how we can talk about last year's season in a way that is a little bit different. And we came up with this idea of unsung hero of the 2019 season. So I'm going to bring, I'm going to just have Lori start. Lori, you're going to give us your unsung hero of the 2019 season. Well, these are supposed to be debatable, and I think uh, Jeff finds this debatable, but however, I think this hands down is not. Um, but my 2019 unsung hero is Tor Huster. And I think for me, it's not even just 2019. If you start to look, and this is going to be the eighth season of the NWSL, Tori has been one of only a few players that have played non US national team players or national team in general, excuse me, um, that have played with the same team, the Washington Spirits. And we're going to see some highlights in terms of what she can do offensively. But I think the, the key thing about Tori is her def defensive presence. And I had the um, fortune of playing with with Tori early in the NWSL and she's been asked to play so many different positions holding mid attacking mid center center back outside back most recently last season an unfamiliar position but continuously season and season out regardless of what her team is doing stands out defensively shuts down some of the top strikers in the in the league and, and doesn't get a ton of credit and I think that is why she's so special. I think that's why she's been with the same team. That's why the Washington Spirit won't give her up, right? Even if she ever demanded it, which that's a whole other topic. But um, I mean, just I think she adds a quality that you don't see on a lot of teams. And so I know that Jeff might not agree, but I love that. That's fine. And, and what, one of the things I'm that, teasing you. Uh, one of the things that right away sticks out to me is when you're watching that highlight and Andy Sullivan is pointing at Tori Huster saying like, that's all you. And I think she is one of those people, you know, that's an unsung moment maybe and gives you a little bit of that. But when I was looking into Tori Huster a little bit more, you told me that this was going to be your player. She helped her team and unsung hero needs to be somebody that is really helping their team get better. They went from ninth place two years ago to fourth place last year. And she had her least amount of minutes in that 2018 season with just over 1200 minutes. And last season, she was back up to that almost 2000 mark where she consistently has been in all the rest of the seasons. And for me, Lori, I, I think that's a great pick and can be really debatable. Jeff, what are your thoughts on Tori Houston and how she helped her Washington spirit squad last season? Yeah, no, I think, you know, I think Tori is a great example. As, as Lori said, one of the only players, certainly non national team to, to have stayed with the same team since the league's inception. And I think that's, you know, in the bigger picture, even that's kind of the, what the league is is really about, and what it's you know the giving opportunities to to players uh, to prove themselves at the highest level, and obviously you know so many of them maybe pushing for the national team, um, and so many of them you know having a a, a pro life that you know as you both know um, not long ago was maybe you know something that that was more of a worry of like what are we you know what are we doing? But um, you know we've got we're into year eight, um, and it's it's pretty incredible to see you know, Tori being a player that's, that's with the same team and that's kind of that rock and stability, um, in, in a sport where we've been searching for like those words. Right. So, yeah. um, it's, it's, it's a great story. It's cool to see. And, um, hopefully they get like a, I don't know, they've got some teams of like their, their ring of honor and everything. I'm sure. Oh, you know, she's for sure. Whatever. That, right? Uh, yeah. Whatever stadium yeah, they're playing and, out in the future. And that's the key, right? It's the longevity. Right. Yeah. I think that for me, that's what it is. I and mean, we were talking about 2019, but I think it extends beyond that. I mean, you mm -hmm. see a lot of players that have like done really well and don't get a ton of credit, but not for seven seasons leading into this eighth season. So yeah. it's pretty impressive. I also, to be fair, I had to ask Jeff, I said, what position did Tori Houston play last year? Was she <laughs> outside back? back? Was she an outside back? Was she... yeah. And I think that's a, a cool them. thing is <laughs> when was... you have a player like that, you just have to have them on the field. And I think that's what the Washington spirit have done is like, if we need someone to fix a hole, like Tori is our player that can fix nearly any hole. Cause she was a whole, she was an attacking midfielder in college. Yeah. You know what? I'll, uh, I'll do some bad takes exposed. I don't know if I actually like wrote anything, but I was not, not Tori specifically, but like Washington had a young back line other than, than Tori. And obviously she had moved uh, to a brand new position 
Um, so I was skeptical of how that was going to work for the spirit last year. And it worked out really well those first few weeks. And, and I was kind of like, well, young back line, young team, really, you know, is that going to sustain? And for the most part, it did. I mean, they were in playoff contention for the majority of the year. So um, I was impressed, you know, and, and she was a big part of that, obviously, on that back line. Um, impressed overall with Washington and and really curious to see what happens, obviously, how that extends into, you know, the future as they build some more. Right. And before we get into your pick, Jeff, I just have to show this. Um, does anyone miss soccer? Kaylin? Yes. <laughs> we all miss soccer. And that's why one of the things we're doing here is giving you some highlights as we talk about some of these players, because we, we're itching for it, right? We want something to chat about. We want to see a, a little bit of soccer. So now I'm going to bring it over to Jeff. Now you're on the clock. You get time to talk about who you think your 2019 unsung hero was in NWSL. Yeah. I mean, I had to think, you know, I didn't want to be too obvious with this. And so I don't know, you know, don't, don't boo me if you think this is not actually unsung, but I really do. Uh, I think the case for, for the player is this, and I'll say the player, Yuki Nagasato, uh, Chicago Red Stars, um, in some ways, very obvious. I think some people, you know, maybe it was like a hipster pick for, for MVP even. But um, when you look at what she did and how she kind of made everything come together, and, and we'll see a couple of cool clips here um, of what she did in 2019 for the Red Stars, you look at what she did and, you know, Sam Kerr obviously gets a ton of credit for the season she put together, 18 goals. I mean, incredible, you know, really best single season performance, uh, I'd say arguably, but best single season performance in league history. But um, underneath her, Yuki Nagasato, what she did to make everything happen uh, on a weekly basis really was was truly incredible to watch. And you can see that in the numbers, the eight goals, eight assists on the season for Yuki. Um, and, and my new favorite stat from our, our friends at FB Ref, uh, expected goals and assists and even expected goals and assists without PKs. Um, Yuki Nagasato, sixth in the league last year. Um, in that category. And, and it just kind of speaks to how much of an influence she was for Chicago. And I think you look at, um, we talk about, you know, the season that Sam Kerr had, um, you know, I'm not saying it doesn't happen without Yuki, but certainly such a big part of that and Chicago's success. And, you know, maybe not, um, especially to kind of a more casual fan, a name that just jumps off the page and says, that's a, you know, their superstar, but she did so much for Chicago. Well, she jumped nearly 500 minutes played as well from 2018 to 2019. So just her impact of how, how much time she had on her field allowed her to do what she did. Lori, you have to think that's a pretty good pick. Oh, it's a it's a great pick. And I agree wholeheartedly with Jeff. I mean, I think that is the question. Like we all know Sam Kerr's capabilities. Um on her own and what she can do to turn games around single-handedly. But I agree without Yuki and what she was capable of and the, the balls that she delivered to Sam, what she did underneath her to draw attention, to create some space for Sam as well. I mean, no doubt, um, such a bright spot. And a lot of times in that position, you don't get a ton of credit. So, I mean, makes complete sense. She's also unsung here on social media as well. She's hilarious. Oh. So it's like, okay, say, yeah. a good thing. She's, she's, <laughs> she's a like, drummer. If you're not following her, yeah. you're not following her, get on it. Like it's too good. <laughs> she, she's also in a band. So I think yeah, that's exactly. like, I mean, cool she's got a lot of talents. So. so we're big fans. We have a pretty good, pretty good list of people that we need to get on here, but that's kind of, it's kind of bumping itself up now that we're yeah. talking about it. I've got a drum here too. So let's get it yeah. going. <laughs> you can't play it, but. So yeah. I want to ask you guys out of those two players, Chicago went from third in 2018 to second. And now it, then you look at the spirit and they went from ninth to fourth whose role do you feel like was bigger in helping their team be successful? You know, Yuki versus Houston is really different because right. one increased their team's spot. The other one sustained it and helped leverage that time when the world cup was happening. So just throwing it out there. Well, of course I'm going with my pick. Yeah, I, I, mean, I, for sure. that, right? <laughs> I mean, personally, I feel like with the spirit, what's interesting about Tori is, 
one of the ways that they revamped and went from the ninth place to the fourth place is because they brought in so much young young players and like totally revamped their their roster and their schedule or excuse me their roster and their team in general. So I mean I think if you have somebody like Tori who's been around her experience, that is invaluable. And to have somebody that's constantly understanding the, the length of the season, how it can be a challenging and the ups and downs. I mean, I would still go with Tori in terms of what that means overall to the program. Whereas I feel like with Chicago, there is a reason why they have been successful in the last couple of years is because a lot of those players, the Colapricos, um, Morgan, Brian, they've been around and they've been able to develop through the Red Star system in those last few years. And so they've really kind of grown up and matured together. Whereas I don't think you quite saw that with the spirit quite yet. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, I think the answer to that too, we'll really see in 2020, whatever we get for, for what we can see is, um, you know, I think Sam Kerr leaving for Chicago, the Red Stars have kind of chosen to, you know, mostly kind of try to fill that role by committee to a degree. Um, and I think that's actually going to put more emphasis on what Nagasato does in that kind of underneath role um, to, to find players. And, um, you know, we'll see, I think, I think if they're successful in a similar way, certainly offensively, and and that sort of by committee is is six goals, six goals, six goals. It's spread around. That's I think you'll see a lot of assists again to to Nagasato from yeah. from that success. So I want you guys <laughs> to chi- I want you guys to chime in too. Make sure you're commenting in the the comments because we want to know who you think the unsung hero of 2019 NWSL season was Uh, Carrie here thinks that it was Sarah Gordon. What do you guys think about that shout? Sarah Gordon had a wonderful year and was a part of that red stars team who finally beat that semifinal uh, curse that they had and made it to the final. Yeah, I think it's a fair, I think it's totally fair shout. I mean, absolutely. I mean, I think the key here is that we could put a lot of people in this bucket. Right. I mean, you could talk about Kristen Hamilton would come up, right? Uh, Denise O'Sullivan, both of those players for North Carolina. In a star-studded team, you have two players that contribute and make things happen in a way, but because there's so many players that are key for them, they don't always get as much attention. So I think you can go across the board and pick out a few players that are so invaluable to their team. Um, but for for Jeff and I, these were two that, you know, the ones that have stood out the most, really. Yeah, I think that's a good shout. Yeah, for sure. And just talking uh, Denise O'Sullivan, I think that that's a good, a good one because she has been – Mm -hmm. consistent if you're talking consistency Lori her last couple years if North Carolina doesn't have her the way that they want to press and get forward they're missing a hole in the middle if she's not there yeah especially when you look about some of these players too and how they ended up in certain teams I mean Denise O'Sullivan being released by Houston Dash and getting picked up by North Carolina I mean it's wild right and it just shows that like it depends on like different teams allow certain players to shine depending on the the formation they play, right, and just their system. So I think it's that's a, that's a really key key aspect. And it'll be interesting to see again what Jeff said, how Yuki does without Sam being there, and how she can play similar but also a different role. Maybe take more on her plate to get forward. So I'd be curious. Yeah. Well, this has been fun. Twenty at nineteen, unsung hero in NWSL. We've got a couple of good choices here: Tori Huster, Yuki Nagasato. I think we got to poll it in some way, so we'll put out a poll later after this and see what you guys think. And we'll put that extra, that other. You can choose. <laughs> <laughs> Lori's trying to convince you to choose Tori oh, Huster. <laughs> we can go for yeah. <laughs> Right. Um, so I'm, we need yeah, I, I'm, exci- <laughs> I'm excited for that segment because I think it's going to bring up a lot of good comments in the comment section, but this is a fun debate. And I think this is what we're all missing is talking about these players who really deserve to be talked about. And it's a good segue into our second segment. And it's something that we have been really excited about when we talked about what we wanted this show to look like. We talked about bringing players in and figuring out why they played, what it was that drove players. And this was really an idea, Lori, that you've been thinking about for a long time. So what, why did you want to do this segment? 
Well, one, I think it's 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 fun to see behind the scenes with certain players, give us a look at um, what players do and like what their training's like, what are they doing when they're not playing soccer. I mean, obviously all these players are multifaceted, have lives outside of soccer, what keeps them ticking. And and I know like playing with a number of these players early on in the NWSL, Jordan, you and I were teammates. I mean, there's a reason why we're all like love the sport and continue on. I mean, Tori Houston, who we were just talking about, another good one, right? Like what has kept her ticking over eight seasons throughout the ups and downs. So it's it's always fun just to kind of peel back layers and and see see what's going on. And so yeah. I think it's the most fun, it's the most fun for all of us. And since we don't have live soccer, <laughs> here we are. Out, <laughs> yeah. Let's figure out a way to talk to someone. So we are going to be joined now by our first ever guest in NWSL Live. I'm really excited to talk with her because, like Lori said, we were teammates, and we were teammates with this player. She's a Long Island native who played her collegiate soccer at Maryland. An eight-year pro, she started her NWSL journey in Washington Spirit, and she's now in her third season in the Pacific Northwest. But her first as a member of the OL Reign. We are so excited to bring in Miss Jasmine Spencer. Let's bring her in here. What's going on, Jazzy? Woo! Hi, Jazz. <laughs> Let's see here. We are, can't hear her right now. Jazz. We did a sound check earlier, so we know it works. So um, <laughs> she just laughed the whole time. Yeah, just laughed the entire time. <laughs> it's perfect. I mean, it makes us feel funny. It makes us feel. We're gonna have Jazzy sign back in and see if it works. Use that same link, Jazz. Um, we'll see if that can get you back in here. We're excited to talk about Jazz because she's gone. Um, she's shown just how durable she is. You know, you talk about Tori Huster and her invincibility in this league. Jasmine Spencer is another one of those players. Let's see if it works this time. Jazzy, she's going to sign back in. We got, we got this, we're going to work it out. Um, and, and she's a player right off the bat. We thought this is someone we want to talk with because she can provide a different insight into this league, into her experience. And we want to know what makes her tick. Jazzy. Hi. Yes. Hey, <laughs> hey, we all did the same. We all did the same. <laughs> That's how excited we are. Is that oh, how we yay. used to celebrate your goals, Jazz? Must be. <laughs> yes. Welcome. Yeah, Thank you nice. so much for being our first ever guest. First off, how are you doing? How are you holding up out there in Tacoma? Um, yeah, it is crazy, but, but, but I'm doing well. Um, things are starting to get a little bit better over here. So, uh, hopefully we can return to some sort of normalcy soon. Um, yeah. but I'm just happy that I'm healthy and, and everyone that we have out here with us is healthy too. So. Well, this segment, Jazzy, we haven't told you much about what we're going to be asking you, but we really want to dig into uh, why you play, what what it is that keeps you ticking. And we're just going to kind of go around the horn and ask you all different kind of questions uh, to get to know you a little bit better. I, I'm going to do a softball really quick because I want to say there's there's new protocol happening. Yesterday was the first on the field training session that could begin for NWSL players all on a voluntary basis, but an individual training. So what did that look like for you in particular? Yeah. So actually for me, I have um, kind of been doing that for about a month or so because I'm still rehabbing from my ACL injury, and the league has been very um, understanding and enabled us to work one-on-one -on -one with our medical staff. So not much has changed for me um, personally, but I know we have a little group chat and some of the girls who are able to get out are like, freedom! <laughs> so it's nice. <laughs> it's been nice. Well, we have a few different questions for you. I think Lori is going to start off and uh, hit you with a good question that she's been curious about. Okay. Well, first of all, Jazz, welcome to the show. You're one of my all-time favorite people and former teammates. So great to have you on. 
welcome. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Um, goodness, I love you so much. Um, okay. So just kind of thinking back, obviously you and I were teammates for the Washington Spirit back in 2013. And then you went on to play with the Western New York Flash, which is now North Carolina Courage. You went to play with Orlando Pride and now with OL Reign. So four out of nine NWSL teams, well done. And you're entering your eighth season. And you also just mentioned that you're recovering from ACL surgery just over a year out, if I'm correct. Um, yep. But talk a little bit about that journey, because I think that's an interesting aspect, especially when it comes to professional sports. Like there's a lot of uncertainty and um, you kind of have to be able to go with the flow a lot. And so can you just talk about that journey over the last eight seasons? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I'll even take it a, a step further back when I finished my senior year at Maryland, the WPS existed and I actually got drafted into the WPS in 2012. And then like three weeks later, it folded. So yeah, to Philly, right? Because you were yes, going to be teammates in Philly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we were destined to be teammates. Um, yes, exactly. But yeah, so it was crazy. I didn't even know if I was going to have the opportunity to be a professional soccer player. Um, and then I went overseas in that in-between period. I wound up playing in Denmark. And then the NWSL um, emerged. So I came back and they had like a supplemental draft basically for people out of college, but like weren't in the States playing. And I actually went into preseason with Boston. So five teams kind of um <laughs> I went all the way through preseason I got cut at the last week before um and then I drove from Boston stopped in Jersey tried out with Jersey then went on to DC and wound up making the team with you in DC like three days before um the inaugural season and then ever since then really it's been a crazy adventure I mean I got waved at spirit and then wound up at flash and then when orlando came into the league i um got picked up in the expansion draft and it sounds crazy and it sounds frustrating but honestly it's enabled me to play with so many different styles and like impressive players that i've just been like taking a little bit in every scenario that I've been placed in. And it's really helped me to become the successful um, player that I am now with the rain. So I'm thankful for it. Yeah. I love that. And I think in it, or I know the one reason why I loved being your teammate is because you did bring that positive energy, right? No matter. Cause I mean, I think we can all think back to that 2013 season. Whoa. <laughs> Welcome <laughs> to professional soccer. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. But, uh, but I would imagine, too, I mean, I understand through my career the ups and downs. I would imagine, too, it's allowed you to play um, kind of, quote, unquote, freer, too, because you don't know what's going to happen, right? There's no guarantees in this game. And so to be able to ha or have to bounce around and then just make the most of it also is like, all right, well, I play this sport because I love it and I'm just going to enjoy myself and learn as much, much as I can. Yep, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jasmine, I, I think Lori was saying on here and even before she she's like she said you were like one of the most positive, upbeat teammates she's ever had, and <laughs> and like we can you know I think feel that like on the media side even we see it on the field. Um, so I mean I'm curious you're you're obviously coming back from injury here. Um, what's that been like, uh, especially in this sort of kind of challenging time, right? I mean, getting back on the field and and staying positive through it all and, and hopefully getting back soon, but obviously a little bit longer of a wait even. What's that been like for you? Yeah, I mean, it's been difficult at times, but overall I think it's been a very positive and endearing journey. I got to take a year to just kind of find and discover myself and and really figure out what I'm passionate about and um, – just kind of like rediscover myself what's jazz away from soccer and and it's been really fun um and of course i'm excited to get back and play um and for me to be honest i know this situation is really crazy but it just took any additional pressure that i had put on myself to get back off because i got more time to continue my rehab mm -hmm. 
one of those things that you said, Jazz, was you were saying it allowed you to do some other things. What's kind of popped up that you've been able to do that excites you? Because I know you've got a couple things cooking. <laughs> yeah, I guess the biggest thing is um, everybody knows I play with like crazy funky headbands and I started a headband collection a couple of years ago, but I decided to relaunch it as a sustainable lifestyle brand. And it's been so fun going behind the scenes and just learning about the fashion industry and tying in my passion for the environment and really just giving it a platform to help inspire people to lead eco-conscious lives. Well, because you also started the mask, right? From some of the leftover materials from the headbands, which is awesome. Yeah, so I have all yeah. this like, leftover fabric from the headbands and I had saw a bunch of different people that I follow um, in the sustainable fashion um, niche were just doing at home sewing and donating their mask and I was like that is incredible so I, I put it on my Instagram story to see if people would be receptive like hey if you buy a mask from me um, and I make an additional one to donate like is that something that people would get behind and support and I had so many people um, give me ideas where to donate and say, yes, we love the idea. So I started making them. I already sold out of my first batch, um, which yeah. is incredible. Wow. And yeah, it's Maybe. really great. So I'm donating um, the second ones to our local rescue.org office here in Seattle. Um, and a lot of those are going to refugees who maybe can't afford or, or find their own mask. So um, it's really crazy times, and it's just cool to see people come together and help. One of the things that you've done to help people come together is you've started virtual summer camps. Can you talk us through that? Because one, I feel like all of us are trying to adapt, right? Do something different <laughs> in this time. And you're like, I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep helping out these kids and I'm just do it in a different way. So how'd you kind of come up with that? Yeah. Um, I have uh, summer clinics that I run at home on Long Island and also in Orlando from when I used to play there. And I have a really good, um, I guess, participant base. And they had reached out and been like, do you think this is going to happen? We've already had other camps canceled. And I'm like, I could not make any promises um, at all. But I did an online training session with Goal 5, a, a women's soccer power brand. And two different parents emailed me with pictures of their kids, like training with my session, like, on their phone or computer. And they were like, thank you for just reaching out and giving the kids something to do at this time. And I was like, you know what, like, I need to figure out a way to do this for the summer too. So I just figured out like, what can I do? How can I put this together to make sure all the kids that have been coming to my camps and maybe kids who were be interested because now their camps are canceled can still do something at home and yeah, that's how I came up with it. And it starts in June and it's going to be fun. This is a nice little shout out in that same vein. Uh, this 07 girls team says, we love you and we miss you. Oh, yeah, they were great. <laughs> I, I worked with them to get my um, C license in the off season. They were my, my team that I paired with. And that's a great group of girls. Um, they're great. So love you guys too. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I do have another question though. So for anybody that's listening that doesn't know, you're engaged to Ryan Harrison. Yep. And we need to know, or I do, because I don't know if anybody else is <laughs> curious, but I need to know about jamming jerk chicken. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Tell us the secret and where is this on Long Island? It's the food truck, right? Yes, guys. Yes. Like I cannot tell you if I didn't, if I wasn't like so passionate about making my comeback, I would have retired to work on the food truck. <laughs> I would have. Um, so yeah, so his family is, his dad's side is Jamaican and his mom's side is Trinidadian. So um, uh, Caribbean roots and they all are amazing chefs and it, there's something that it's something that they're really passionate about. And so a year ago, they bought a food truck, uh, cleaned it out, designed it, took all their basically family recipes, 
and now they are open for business. It's in Suffolk County, but they just signed up for DoorDash because things are crazy. Um, And they're actually kind of giving a discount to anybody who's an essential worker. You come with your badge, whether you're uh, a healthcare professional or a delivery person or a supermarket person, you just come, show your employee badge, and they'll give you uh, a discounted meal because, you know, his parents are um, birth, both nurses and nursing homes, so they understand uh, the load that you guys are all taking for us to keep us safe, um, and they just want to be able to give back to you. But it is bomb. If you like jerk chicken, <laughs> curry goat, yes. um, everything, oh, it's yeah. so good. We talked about okay. this earlier, and it really made me hungry. I was like, that sounds delicious. Yeah, it oh, yeah it was on the so website good. and everything. It's amazing. <laughs> I, I'm trying to, like, figure out a way if – if and when we open back, like he can pull up to the sky blue games. And yes. So it's like, <laughs> there you go. Let's yeah. do it behind the scenes. We'll do a little yes. video, yes. everything. Yes. Okay. Yes. Great. Yes. Like, I'm oh, in. cause that's, that's what I want when I step off the field. Oh, it's so, good. <laughs> <laughs> so do I. And I don't even play anymore. I just want to go with them, actually. <laughs> we, we've got some questions coming in here, Jazz. So I'm going to put this one up from Peter. He's saying, what is your best day or your experience as a pro soccer player? Ooh, that is a tough one. I feel like I have so many. Um, I think traveling. I have gotten to see so many different places around the world, places I never thought I would go to before um, because I was playing soccer. So I think that's probably the most incredible thing. I love that. We've got one more here. Chris Johnson wants to know, as a player who's been with the NWSL since the beginning, what advice do you have for the new players this season? Oh, this is good. This is kind of what um, me and my roommate, Michelle Betos, told our trialists and incoming rookies uh, when the news broke that everything was going to be postponed. Um, Just be resilient and believe in yourself and keep working hard because things are going to happen. Life is going to happen. Opportunities are going to pass you by, but another one will come. And so you just keep working hard. And when the timing is right, it will happen for you. And, you know, it's such a crazy time right now. And those young girls coming up, they are starting to understand the uncertainty of the life of a professional athlete, but it shouldn't make you give up on your dream. If this is what you want to do, go for it. It will happen. Okay. Let's be real though. Out of all the players in NWSL, those two telling you to be resilient. That's like, (laughs) I mean, you two are a definition of resilient. Yeah. Yeah. We have some stories for sure. Oh goodness. (laughs) Um, Last season in general, just. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness, yeah. I know. Funny story about that. So obviously we are roommates um, and I tore my ACL in the first game and then Michelle tore her Achilles like three games later. Um, and we get a phone call like from Bill, our owner, and he's like, is there anything you guys need? We're so sorry. Like we're going to send someone to the apartment to cleanse it because <laughs> clearly there's some bad juju. <laughs> oh. We're like, yeah, well at this point we're a package deal. So what can you say? Yeah. <laughs> Jeff, one, one more question. I, I know you wanted to talk to jazz just about her return to play. So we got to get that one yeah. in before well, we let her go. I think I think we got some uh, some clips of of jazz here. We wanted to when get on here. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I think um, one that stood out in this. Well, we got this goal here. You can see this, right, Jazz? This was a great mm-hmm. touch and finish. Um, I don't know if you've got a goal that stands out to you. I know this this clip we've got is going to run a little longer back to the Orlando days, but. Um, you know, getting back on the field, obviously we talked about a little bit. I mean, is there, is there something that stands out to you that, um, you know, I mean, scoring goals, is it just stepping over the line? I mean, what, what is it about getting back on the field? That's, that keeps you ticking. 
Oh, I mean, yeah, I love to play. I have so much fun playing, so I'm definitely excited just to play. But it's funny you chose this goal because this one's <laughs> really special to me. That that one is the first goal I scored for the rain. Um, and I had worked so hard that season to get into the starting lineup. I mean, we were star studded. Um, we had Naho Kawasumi, Pino, Jody Taylor, Ali Long, like I can go on for days and I was little old jazz, like <laughs> working hard every day. So to get in, like start that game and score that, I mean, clearly my celebration says it all, um, but I love that. <laughs> That's the most amazing. <laughs> That's hilarious. Same with yeah. this one with Orlando. Yeah, this Orlando so goal too. Yeah, and that one, that that's probably my second favorite um, because that was like in stoppage time in the first year of Orlando. You can kind of see how crowded it was. We used yeah. to get such, such great crowds when we played at the Citrus Bowl. Um, and that was incredible too. I mean, uh, I just, I have so much fun playing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, hopefully, uh, hopefully back soon, everybody back soon, right? Yeah. That's exactly, we, we wanted to show you that. And um, I'm sure you remind yourself every day how fantastic you are as a player, but we wanted to tell you that we're rooting for you and we just can't wait to see you back there, out there on the pitch. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Thank yeah. you. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, thanks for being our first guest. Yeah, of course. This uh, is awesome. I'll be tuning in every week. Tell right, Michelle we're coming for her since you're a package deal. She's <laughs> on soon, okay? Yes. yes. <laughs> All right. We'll see you later, Jazzy. Bye. Bye. Oh, my gosh. We knew that was going to be great, but how fun was it to talk to Jasmine Spencer there? Yeah, bringing the energy. She she was, and so many people commenting just how uh, some people in Tacoma saying uh, Tacoma would love the jam <laughs> and jerk chicken, and <laughs> I think we're all in the same boat. We would all love this yeah. jam and jerk chicken. So, um, really great to talk to Jasmine as she is recovering from her ACL injury. And uh, I love that. I actually had a chance to talk with her a couple of weeks ago and she was just talking how much she is using this time where everything's kind of put on pause to take that pressure off of herself. Lori, you've been in situations where it feels like all this pressure is on you to get back to something that you have lost for a little bit. Right. And can, can you imagine what it was like? It's like to be her in those shoes of just getting some extra time to get back fit again? Yeah, I was really curious about that coming into this interview and if that was one of the almost relief for players that have been injured. Another one that comes to mind is Merritt Mathias. Um, players that knew that they were going to have to try to not rush their recovery, but at the same time push, really push to get back to, to enjoy the majority of the season. And now with these unfortunate circumstances and everything that's going on, just taking a deep breath and, and exactly what Jazzy was saying, which is like, okay, I'm just going to use this time to really like dive deep into myself, um, rediscover what I'm curious and passionate about and also have more time to be really diligent on her recovery. So I think um, really sounds like if, if you're going to use the time wisely, she's doing it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I got to put this in here. Bill Lynch was saying players like Jasmine make the league in as inspiring as it is. She works hard as any player in the league and has consistently improved. I think that's one of the things that really impresses me the most about Jasmine is her work ethic through everything and her ability to adapt. Jeff, she was talking about all the teams she played for and how lucky she was to play on all those teams. Not a lot of people would have that kind of perspective. Yeah. I mean, look, you, you both know better than me. It's, it's kind of a crazy world. She mentioned telling that to, to the younger players. I mean, this is kind of, this is the extreme right now what's going on, but um, there's so many, you know, there's trades, there's transfers, there's, I mean, she talked about going to three different tryouts in the same preseason there. So um, it's, it's a crazy kind of grind. And I think, you know, we were talking about this even earlier in the episode when we're talking about players like Tori Houston who are, who are doing it, um, Jasmine Spencer, since the, the beginning of the league as well. Um, you know, it's, it's it's incredibly impressive and obviously I think speaks to, you know, a player's love for the game to, to be doing it because it can kind of, right. you know, it's easy to kind of get down about it. But 
right. never, never for jazz. I mean, she's, she's bringing yeah. the energy all the time. What a great first guest. I don't think we could have chose better. She she really <laughs> knocked it out of the park. Our last segment that we're going to get to before we say goodbye for the night is we just want to hear from you guys. So in this last segment, segment of every single week, we're going to take questions from you guys in the comment section, maybe some questions from Twitter or Instagram that you have posted before. But we also just want to look around the league and see what's happening. For us, these last few weeks, we've been itching to get content from NWSL uh, because there are no games, right? And we're looking to the players saying, what are they doing? Has anything stuck out to you guys as, as stuff that you've seen over the last few weeks that you feel like more people need to know about? Um, I mean, I just feel like the it's it's interesting to kind of see the individual training routines. Obviously, um, you know, I, I've heard some different stories of um, just talking to some players and hearing some of them on on other on other um, podcasts and things like that. Like, you know, they're all kind of stuck at home, and for some of them, that's with like a roommate. Um, Jasmine just mentioned that, but um, I think there's kind of some funny stories that are like they try to get out to the park and run, and they can't actually interact. So they're kind of waving across the park. Um, I've heard that one. So that's, you know, it's just kind of an interesting thing. And I think um, hopefully things get back to normal a little bit soon and we'll be able to kind of laugh about that stuff. So I'm um, just seeing kind of the innovation in, in maybe technical work and, and how they're, how each player is adapting. Right. I don't know if you guys have been aware of this, but I am going to share my screen here and show you guys uh, something I've been super impressed with, impressed with, and I also said press with because I'm talking about Tony Presley here. Have you guys seen her TikTok videos? She has been just killing it. Let's see if this is going to work here. Um, she has TikTok's been doing, like a new world to me, Jordan. It is. <laughs> she. <laughs> I, I got to find where this is because you guys have to see this. She does this one video where she is dancing like she's a DJ in her kitchen. And of course, right now, because I'm trying to do it live, it is not showing. That's it. She's but, next week. Get her on the show. Yep. <laughs> yep. We, got the, we need the live version. I don't know if this is working now. Is it working now? Oh man, this was going to be so good. So Tony Presley, TikTok, crushing it. Uh, she's been doing an awesome job there. The other thing that I have seen that I really like is this. Uh, they're doing this hashtag, the real heroes campaign. And it's a collaboration with all different major league sports. And Jasmine actually mentioned it earlier in the show is that her in-law, her future in-laws are both healthcare workers and that they are in the front line. And so what is happening is everybody that is a member of it is for some reason, my screen screen sharing isn't working right now, but all these athletes are taking their game worn jerseys and they're putting someone that means something to them in the front lines and they're replacing the names on their Jersey with those uh, other names. So I'll tweet it out later and, and retweet it so you guys can see it. But I was going to show you uh, Jasmine's tribute to her future in-laws. And then I was going to also show you Hannah Davidson from the Chicago red stars, giving a shout out to a couple people that um, mean a lot to her. So just some cool things happening around the league. And uh, you got to leave it to those NWSL players coming up with some creative ways to, uh, stay engaged here. Totally. I mean, that's the, that's the exciting part. Take to yeah. social media. And like I right. said, get Tony on. We need those, <laughs> need those dance moves <laughs> live. Tony, we're coming for you. Uh, Jeff, Lori, this has been so much fun and loved chatting with you guys. Next week, we're debating a new topic. So if you guys have any suggestions for us, make sure you hit us up on social media and we will figure out what we're going to talk about next because uh, we know there are a lot of best ofs in this league. We could go best at goal. We could go best goalkeeper. Um, I, I don't know. If Tony's coming on, we might have to do best left foot, right? <laughs> totally. Long balls. Amazing. Right, right. Um, all right. That's it for us. First episode of NWS, NWSL Live is done and dusted. You guys, that was so much fun. Thank you so much. And we will see you guys in 
a week. Thursday, 8 p.m. next week. We'll be right here. Uh, thanks for joining us. Bye, you guys. See you.